What's up guys, I'm Andrew Goldfarb from Gearbox. Uh, today we're taking a look at the first ever campaign demo from Battleborn. I have Aaron Lindy, writer, Randy Varnell, creative director. Randy, you know, tell me about the origins of the project. When we were wrapping up Borderlands 2, I was a design producer on that project, and Randy Pitchford and I and several others got together and were imagining, well, what do we want to do next, right? And so we looked at a lot of the things that we really, really loved about Borderlands, you know, making a lot of characters, coming up with a sweet, unique art style, uh, blending you know, our favorite games and, and parts of our favorite genres together, you know, and doing something new and unique, and then coming up with something that had amazing, epic stakes. And, and Battleborn emerged out of it. It's great. I mean, give me the elevator pitch, like what's the story? Sure, I, and it's, Battleborn is set in a universe in the far, far future, and it's kind of at an extreme, right? It's, it's at a time that all of the stars but one have darkened in the sky. They've gone black, and Solus is the very last star. And all the, all the civilizations and beings out there that live in a, the, the vast number of planets that darkened, you know, got in their spaceships to use their forms of interstellar travel, and they traveled and they retreated all the way back, and now all find themselves kind of here around Solus, and now enmeshed in a struggle for survival and for power and for, for place, and they, they formed into these five factions. But they found out really quickly that they're not each other's worst enemy, that the actual worst enemy is out there, the Varelsing, this large and dark and mysterious foe that's coming in and has been behind the consumption and the darkening of the stars. And so it's now threatening Solus itself. And so among the factions, these battleborn, these heroes have emerged that are willing to set aside those differences and bring that fight right to the Varelsi to save the universe. Aaron, Randy mentioned those factions. I mean, we have all these different characters. Kind of give me a breakdown of, of how the factions work. Yeah, yeah, sure. So like, uh, well, I guess we can start off with like the peacekeepers, you know. They're the sworn protectors of Solus and do so by enforcing a pretty heavy-handed draconian law. <laughs> um, uh, and, you know, those are characters like Oscar Mike, uh, who is a sort of, you know, he's his own dude. You know, he's very much his own character. In Montana, you know, big, boisterous, you know, got the minigun and all that, uh, tiny head. That's uh, that's part of his deal. Um, we've got the Eldred. Uh, the Eldred are, are um, they're protectors of the natural cosmological order. Uh, and that's where we have a lot of the, the fantasy tropes that we're really magic excited about. Wielders, magic wielders yeah. and that kind of stuff. Um, uh, so characters like Thorne, you know, she's got a really powerful bow in addition to an array of magical abilities that she can use. Uh, uh, moving on from there, there's the Generate. The Generate are, are sort of uh, uh, power mad, uh, imperialistic force. Um, Wrath is a, is a great uh, Generate character. You know, you're gonna see a lot of that artfulness of combat. And the, the, you know, he's, he's really into what he's doing. A little bit of goth. A little, yeah, a little yeah, bit a little of goth. Bit. Just a smidge, just a smidge. Uh, and uh, from there, there's the, uh, the LLC, the Last Light Consortium. Uh, they're the war profiteers in our universe, so they're uh, they're really interested in arming all sides of the conflict. Uh, they, they run uh, uh, Minion Robotics, right, are, uh, which make uh, all yeah, the robots and all the robots machines. And so stuff, they sell yeah. to all the factions. Exactly, so they're really right? Yeah, yeah. They're, practically they're, war profiteering. Yeah, exactly, purely profit-driven kind of yeah. uh, kind of uh, organization. And yeah, you see a lot of those uh, a lot of those traits exemplified in characters like Marquis, who you know is very much he's a very dapper dapper fellow uh, and uh, lives a very particular lifestyle that that you know doesn't think much of the, <laughs> the folks that you know have less than yeah. he does. Uh, and finally, there's the Rogues. Uh, the Rogues are a faction that isn't a faction. You know, they uh, uh, they're the unaffiliated free peoples of Solar. So and like, pirates. yeah, smugglers, yeah. pirates, uh, salvagers, um, and there's a ton of different kinds of characters of all shapes and sizes that fit under that. You know, it's like they're just the folks that don't fly under a banner. Awesome. Randy, I think that's a pretty good overview, but uh, tell us about the demo we're about to see. We're really excited. Today is the first look at the cooperative campaign of Battleborn. Uh, today, our Battleborn's mission is to go to the planet Tempest, where there's this huge shardfall activity. A star shard, these massive sources of power and income for our Battleborn, is landing on the planet's surface. So our Battleborn are going to go look for it. They're going to be aided by Cleese, who's in the ship above, flying around, kind of looking for the shards, and also ready to harvest it with a ship. Also, we have Melka on the ground. Melka's running around, uh, helping find enemies but even more important than that, she's trying to get the defense codes to the defense system for the planet so we can get off and we're all done. So let's join this Battleborn Cooperative Campaign mission in progress. So first let's take a look at some of our Battleborn today, get a good introduction. Starting off from the screen here, we've got Oscar Mike. Can you do this? Huh, huh, huh. Didn't think so. All right, moving down to the group down below. From uh, left to right, one of my favorites, Montana. Gonna change my name to Mantana. Next to him is Thorn. This is Miko, our combat botanist. Such wonder, so much wonder. And last but not least, Wrath. <laughs> the sword's mine now. All right, Battleborn, let's head into the mission. Easier said than done, I'm afraid. I've never seen an atmosphere so active. Charged homes, aptly named indeed. 
Eyes up! A class four is forming overhead! Payday has landed! Quickly, to the impact site! Melka, how's our exit coming? I've gained access to the Tempest defense grid and located the clearance codes. Once I decrypt them, getting off world should be trivial. No way of giving you the codes, lady! Let me go! Initiating decryption sequence! Ah, ow! There's no one decryption me! Ah, I'll meet you guys at the harvest site once I'm done. Ah, hacking the, you know, computer. No, not the base! We've got our first mission objective here, so our Battleborn are going to head into this first combat. This gives us a great chance to look at some of their primary attacks. They're very different, so we're going to look at it from a few different angles. Alright, now there's a good look at the, the primary attacks. Now let's take a look at some of our Battleborn skills. So now that we've completed the objective, we've earned some experience which leveled us up. Every time you level up in Battleborn, you get to choose between different ways to customize your character. So let's take a look at Oscar Mike as he brings up his Helix. Now at level six, we've already gotten a few levels here. At level six, Oscar Mike has a choice between red dot sight and scope. Today, Oscar's gonna choose red dot sight, which is gonna let him still get a great a benefit to aiming at the enemies while maintaining his mobility. There's also a neat thing to talk about here, and that's at level seven, our Battleborn unlocked their ultimate skill. So here's Montana up on the ledge. Montana's gonna show us his ultimate skill, Mansformation. Montana's a big guy, moving around slowly, but Mansformation gives him a way to charge into combat and get up close and personal so he can really help his team out, absorbing all that damage. All right, leveling up out of the way, we're gonna move into the next part of the mission. Now here we're gonna flip the tables a little bit and we're gonna have a defensive scenario. That shard that fell in the beginning, we need to go and help Cleese, the NPC, uh, protect it while he harvests the shard. So Battleborn are gonna head out, cross the gap to where the shard is, uh, lining up and taking these conveniently placed jump nodes. So Battleborn, let's hit the jump nodes right now. Let us bring the fight to them! Excellent. Stand by. <laughs> Sensors indicate that scores of dreadful things are marching this way to kill us all. Do not allow them to disrupt the harvest. 
servants approach.
surprise indeed. Now that the jam is disabled, I should be able to pinpoint the last known location. Uh, yes, here we are. Be advised, this place creeps the hell out of me. Quit your whining, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> That's your first look at the cooperative campaign for Battleborn. Randy, when can people see more? Man, I'm really excited for people to get their hands on this game. They're going to be able to in 2015 when it releases on Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Very cool. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Randy. Thank you guys for watching.